Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Let's Talk, the series where we watch kaiju killing humans and we pick a side. This is your friendly neighborhood Birdman here, and today I'm bringing you a review of the movie that a lot of people have been waiting for, Godzilla vs. Kong. As if this needed any introduction, Godzilla vs. Kong is a kaiju film centered around, you guessed it, King Kong and the King of Monsters himself, Godzilla. Godzilla has been attacking humanity seemingly at random and the people at Apex have been trying to figure out why and what they can do about it. Meanwhile, on Skull Island, King Kong has been placed in an enclosure by Monarch to save him from the perpetual storm system that has engulfed the island, but of course, he wants out. Apex executives enlist the help of Monarch scientists in order to find a power source deep inside the Earth that may help them stop the rampaging Godzilla, and as Kong is the key to finding this power source, well, now we got a movie. Usually this is the part where I start listing off who this movie is starring, but considering the context of this film, you probably really don't care. Initially when I saw the trailer for this film, I also complained about the humans and lamented the trailer's focus on the humans. This has been a long-standing complaint with the MonsterVerse films that they place a little too much emphasis on the human characters. Fortunately though, I can say that in this instance, they seem to have struck a nice balance between the human drama and the kaiju goodness we're all paying for. Actually, Team Godzilla, which consists of Millie Bobby Brown, Julian Dennison, and Brian Tyree Henry, were probably my favorite part of the human aspect of this film. They are the humor of the film and bring a sense of levity and groundedness to an otherwise otherworldly film. About the first hour or so is mainly dealing with the setup of the premise, and I'm glad that these three characters aren't awful to follow. Special shout out to Brian Tyree Henry. Please get this dude in more movies. He was great in his small role in Joker, and he was excellent here, playing the conspiracy theorist Bernie. You all know how I feel about conspiracy theorists on this channel, so you know that I'm doling out high praise right now. As for the plot of this movie, I'm sad to say that it's pretty standard fare. Of course, this isn't to say that it's all bad, it's just that if you go in with high expectations for the plot, and you should because we need to hold filmmakers to higher standards than we do, you're probably not going to be impressed. Without going into spoiler territory, you have seen this movie a million times before. Something happens that spurs the combatants into motion and they're on a collision course. This is basically every versus movie before it, and you probably already know what I'm saying. I will say though that the execution is what matters and for that I have to give the movie high praise. It's basically two storylines that intersect towards the middle and I appreciated this approach even if it's not necessarily original. It's two hours long and boy did it not feel like it. The pacing is absolutely excellent and the only downtime you get is when Godzilla stops being a badass which is almost never. Seriously, Godzilla in this movie is wrecking shit, and I think this is the fastest I've ever seen him move. Also, if you like Atomic Breath, this is the movie for you, because he is a fire in his laser. Kong is easily the heart of the film, as the film positions Godzilla as the villain, and since we need a sympathetic hero, King Kong is your guy. Personally, I enjoyed Kong's characterization in this movie as they continue Jordan Vote Roberts' excellent vision of King Kong from Skull Island. Of the two, Kong feels the most human, and that makes sense, you know, considering he's an ape. His bruising and athletic fighting style is incredible to watch, and he's more than a match for the other king. Speaking of incredible to watch, this movie is absolutely gorgeous. It's not going to win any cinematography awards, but the saturation of colors, incredible vistas, and supremely solid visual effects are a true spectacle. The fight in Hong Kong is especially gorgeous, but then again, I love neon colors and bright flashing lights, so your mileage may vary. The best thing about these visuals is that the fights are completely in frame and the movie doesn't randomly cut away from the kaiju action, which is a big plus in a movie like this. We came to see Godzilla vs. Kong and goddamn it, we got Godzilla vs. Kong. They have delivered. The reason I bring this up is because it seems like most of the budget went toward the visuals and that was a great move by Warner Brothers. The CGI never appears obviously fake and that's always a plus for a movie like this. I'd also like to make special mention of the soundtrack in this film. It's not Blade Runner 2049 or Oblivion, but there's some pretty neat music in this movie. There's a specific scene involving zero gravity where I had to lean in and just take in and enjoy the ambiance. 
Now, it ain't all sunshine and rainbows, of course, and there are some annoyances that I had with this movie, specifically Team Kong. I didn't really care about their dynamic as much, and it's not that they were overtly bad, it's just that they were kind of boring. I will applaud them for casting an actual deaf actress and treating her story with sensitivity and respect, but like I said in my trailer reaction video, I just didn't care. Fortunately, not too much time is spent on these characters, so it's not that bad. As I said earlier, the plot can probably be seen as a negative here, just considering it's a fairly thin reason to get these two iconic monsters to fight. There are quite a few things that happen during Kong's journey specifically that you're probably going to find pretty hard to believe. Let's just say that Kong and his ancestors are more intelligent than we have been led to believe. All in all, I found this movie very enjoyable to watch, and I do think it has some decent rewatchability, especially towards the second hour of the movie. We get some absolutely sick monster fights in this thing, and they're all in their full glory. The pacing is on the level of Kong Skull Island, which of course was excellent, and the visceral nature of this battle was just like those in Godzilla King of the Monsters. So in essence, they took the best aspects of the previous two movies and mashed them together. Following Team Kong introduces some drag to the wings of this flight, but the visuals that accompany Kong's journey are seriously some of the best in this franchise. You probably already know the outcome of this fight, but damn, was it entertaining. A B plus. I gotta say, between this and Zack Snyder's Justice League, Warner Brothers and HBO Max are absolutely crushing it right now. If these two movies are any indication, we're probably in for a real treat when Mortal Kombat hits the service. In any case, if you've seen Godzilla vs. Kong, please let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below, and please be mindful of those that would like to avoid spoilers. This has been your friendly neighborhood Birdman, and I'll see you in the next one.